The House will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. O oh God, give us grace to set a good example to all with whom we work, to be just and true in all our dealings, to be diligent in the way we fulfill each task. Give us compassion as we face temptations and experience failures. Teach us to search for truth in the stories of strangers and find value in the lives of our neighbors, whether we agree with them or not. Help us to appreciate the ideals and sympathize with the frustrations of others. No one is beyond your love. Flowing from that deep well of love, give each one gathered here a sense of purpose, hope and fulfillment, joy and companionship in their relations with others. Order our steps and guide our feet while we run the marathon of life and fill our days with gratitude for good and meaningful work. As we go through the trials of life, help us to realize that you are with us at all times and in all things. We have no secrets from you, and your loving grace enfolds us for eternity. Give courage, patience, and vision Strengthen all in their vocation of witness to the world and service to others. That which we know not, reveal. That which is wanting in us, fill up. Gift us to be gracious and generous toward all. Give us a voice, your own voice, to cry out to you for mercy for the world. You, light, give us light. You, wisdom, give us wisdom. You, supreme strength, strengthen us. Amen. The chaplain for today is Reverend Joy L. McDonald Coltvet from Christ Lutheran Church on Capitol Hill, St. Paul, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The clerk will take the roll.
clerk will close the roll. <clears throat> Quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. Journal of the House, 90th session, 2017, 15th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Monday, February 13th, 2017. If there is no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with, and the journal will be approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business has been placed on each member's desk. If there is no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. Second reading of House File number 985. Second reading. Introduction of Bills. Introduction of first reading of House Files 1189 through 1290. First reading, House Files 1189 through 1290. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there's no objection, we'll take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. <laughs> there's a motion at the desk. The clerk will report the motion. <clears throat> Garofalo moves that House File Number 36 be recalled from the Committee on Civil Law and Data Practices Policy and be re-referred to the Committee on Taxes. Recognize the member from Dakota, Representative Garofalo, to introduce your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Members, this bill deals with a property tax classification issue. I have spoken with both chairs of the committees. This is referring it to its proper jurisdiction in the Tax Committee. Discussion on the Garofalo motion. The member from Ramsey, Representative Lesh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, connected with Representative Graffalo about this, I don't know, a few weeks ago, but then we never connected back up. So I don't know what a storage condominium is, uh, but both chairs are good with it. But um, why, w why did it go to civil law? If it has nothing to do with civil law stuff, why did it go there in the first place? You don't know? He will yield, Representative Graffalo. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, sometimes when these uh, bills are coming in fast and furious, particularly at the beginning of session, I think there's references that maybe be misunderstood. But clearly, in this case, it is a property tax misclassification change that I'm making. Uh, in the event that upon review of staff or, candidly, anyone who thinks that this has some relevancy to civil law, I am happy to send this provision to civil law. But I think if you review the bill, Representative Lush, you'll see it's a property tax classification. Representative Lesh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Graffalo, I appreciate that. And uh, that's probably the case. I just had no idea what a storage condominium was. So thank you. Further discussion on the Graffalo motion. <clears throat> Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of adoption of the Graffalo motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. The member from Hennepin, Representative Allen, for what purpose do you rise? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Point of personal privilege. State your point of personal privilege. In honor of Black History Month, I would like to highlight uh, an author, American author, James Baldwin. Uh, James Baldwin was born Bold Baldwin was born in 1924, and he died in 1987. And he wrote over 30 published works, including numerous um, spoken word and music recordings, which you can find on YouTube. Um, he wrote um, a collection of essays. And most, uh, in his later years, during the civil rights era, talked about the intricacies of racial and class distinctions in American society. He is frequently described by other authors as one of the most influential 
uh, as an influential writer of African American literature. And at the time of uh, Baldwin's death, he had an unfinished manuscript called Remember This House. It is, it is a memoir of personal recollections of civil rights leaders, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King Jr. And that manuscript uh, forms the basis for the 2016 documentary, um, Raul Peck's I Am Not Your Negro. And I think many of you have probably seen that, um, either, whether on Netflix or on, in, it may even still be in the theaters. His, his books uh, spoke, um, his very first book was about a um, Maxim Gorky, which was in 1947, and Gorky was a Russian-Soviet writer. He was an advocate for uh, Russia, Russian civil rights and social reform um, in Russia. And then he wrote an autobiography, Tell It on the Mountain, and he wrote a series of other books. He was also openly a gay uh, black man, and he wrote uh, Giovanni's Room, which predominantly has white characters and another series of, of novels which dealt with uh, both black and white characters along with uh, heterosexual, gay, and bisexual characters. He, he left the country um, in, uh, when he was 24 to move to France. He, he was a fluent uh, French speaker. He came back in 1957 to participate in the uh, civil rights movement. And I think in, 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 it was a common reading in high school and middle school, but, it, but at some point it did not become part of the common core standards. So I think there are a lot of us that are familiar with his writings and studying in school. And I, I frequently uh, uh, use, um, when talking about poverty, I sometimes say we can't afford to be poor anymore. And I always wondered where that came from. I know I didn't make that up. But, but he had a quote, um, he was actually on the cover of Time Magazine for a series of uh, essays that he wrote in the, um, in the uh, New York Times and Esquire. And one of his quotes was, anyone who has ever struggled with poverty knows how extremely expensive it is to be poor. And if one is a member of a captive population, economically speaking, one's feet have simply been placed on the treadmill forever. And I think that he, he stood in contrast to, as an alternative voice during the civil rights and talked about his message of love and understanding. He had a basically Christian background, but he got a lot of attention from white America. And the uh, question was, what do blacks really want? And it was something that he was able to talk about the black experience, about growing up in Harlem, about being gay. And so I want to read one more quote, if you'll bear with me. And this is something that I really, really struck out, uh, stuck out, how do you say it? It really, I could relate to it in that it is not only speaking from the black experience, but also from children, American Indian children, who were uh, removed from their homes uh, in, in placed in boarding schools, which my grandmother was one of those children. <clears throat> he writes, or I think he said this in a, in a maybe a speech, or um, let's see, let me get the quote here. It was a New York Times interview. He said, the brutal truth is that the bulk of white, America, white people in America never had any interest in educating black people, except as this could serve white purposes. It is not the black child's language that is in question. He was talking about black English, if you remember that sort of uh, discussion decades ago. It is not the language that is despised, it is his experience. A child cannot be taught by anyone who despises him, and a child cannot afford to be fooled. A child cannot be taught by anyone whose demand, essentially, is that the child repudiate his experience and all that gives him sustenance, and enter a limbo in which he will no longer be black, and which he knows that he can never become white. Black people have lost too many black children that way. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Recognize the member from Carver, Representative Hoppe. For what purpose do you rise? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise to, uh, well, I don't know. I rise to apologize to the body for handing something out that we didn't sign. That was my fault. <laughs> and then I rise to uh, invite every member of the House, as well as all the members of the Senate, are invited Friday, this Friday, February 17th, 3.30 to 5 in the afternoon, for uh, Pheasants Forever is having their National Pheasants Fest in Minnesota at the Convention Center. They're inviting every uh, Minnesota legislator, House and Senate. Representative Lilly and I are the co-chairs of the Minnesota Division of the National Association of Sportsmen's Caucuses, and we would like to extend a, a hand to all of you to come to the event, socialize, meet some conservation leaders, and if you're so inclined, get into Pheasant Fest for free. And Mr. Speaker, I will yield to Representative Lilly. He will yield. Representative Lilly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I, uh, uh, like uh, Representative Hoppe, I'd like to uh, invite all of you to come uh, um, uh, Friday at 3.30 to uh, 5 at the Minneapolis Convention Center. But just keep in mind, a lot of these partners have uh, really done a great job with uh, um, restoring and protecting a lot of our habitat around uh, Minnesota. and. Uh, it's uh, really a positive story to, to be told and to hear about and uh, maybe see some of the good work that they're doing. Uh, hope to see you there. Thank you. There is a motion at the desk. The clerk will report the motion. <clears throat> Pepin moves that the chief clerk be instructed to invite the Senate by message to a joint convention to be held on Wednesday, February 22nd at uh, 2017 at 7 o'clock p.m in the Chamber of the House of Representatives to elect to the Board of Regents of the University of Minnesota. Recognize the member from Hennepin, the Majority Leader, Representative Pepin, to introduce the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that the Chief Clerk be instructed to invite the Senate uh, by message to a joint convention to elect Regents for the University of Minnesota on Wednesday, February 22, 2017, at 7 p.m. Discussion on that motion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. Announcements. Representative Hortman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This isn't an announcement. Privilege of the House. State your privilege of the House. Members, we have a problem in the House of Representatives. And I, I am just going to say, I, I think we have a little problem with being respectful and listening to certain people speaking. And uh, early in the session, Representative Halverson was speaking, and uh, the row behind her was so loud, she could hardly see, hear herself talk. We have had members of my caucus who are younger and female speaking up in committee, saying really intelligent things, getting some things mansplained to them by the chairs of those committee or authors of the bill. And we just had a member of our caucus read something to recognize Black History Month. And we did not have a quiet and respectful body. Uh, in my role as minority leader, I've had uh, other gentlemen leaders explain to me things that I perfectly well understand. And I know they are not the first men who will explain things to me uh, that I perfectly already well understand, nor will they be the last. But I think that as a body, we need to create a more respectful environment for people who are speaking on the floor and people who are speaking in committee. Further announcements? The member from Sherburn, Representative Knobloch. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, the Committee on Ways and Means will meet at 3 o'clock today in room 200 to take up three bills. Any further announcements? The member from Hennepin, Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, February 16th, 2017. Representative Pepin moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, February 16th, 2017. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. Representative Pepin. I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Pepin moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails, and the House stands adjourned until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, February 16, 2017.